Sing to the rock, sing to the tree, sing to the firefly lighting up the sky. Sing, sing to the sea. Hello, I'm Mary Whelan, and this is the song. A show that presents songwriters and their original songs. And today I am very pleased to introduce from North Andover, Massachusetts, Wanda Metcalf. And I just start. Fitting in has always been something of a fight. I managed to do something that someone thinks ain't right. I went to a cougar meetup group and saw the women there, often sported long red nails and carefully puffed hair. They said you're not a cougar. In fact, to tell the truth, your age and frumpy clothing, you're more a saber tooth. You make our prey uneasy. They said, please go away. I milled about and I slunk out in haggard disarray. So I went to an atheist meetup group who beat their chests and cried. Religion is an opiate, and then they went inside. I said, my God, it's cold in here. And they gave me such a look. I felt myself grow smaller. Cause that was all it took They said you're not an atheist You've given yourself away In fact, in times of peril We suspect you pray So I went to a folk song meetup group where people seemed less tense. I followed this with other acoustical events. And they haven't thrown me out yet, except for this one guy. And if they keep accepting me, I'll stay until pigs fly. Launch into the next one. Here we go. Molasses in the winter time, proverbially. Reality may differ as the folks in Boston know. On January 15 in the year 1919, North End was the setting of a most peculiar scene. At daybreak all was frozen The wind was cold and raw Soon it warmed to 41 A January thaw 
That might have been the trigger that caused the bat to blow. It might have gotten overfilled. And now we'll never know. The vat was never solid, and the treacle trickled down to cover up the many leaks they had it painted brown. Children caught the drippings and brought them home to eat. Molasses ran into their pants, gooey, dark, and sweet. At noon the vat began to bulge and groaned like something dying. Suddenly the rivets popped and great steel plates went flying. Molasses gushed down streets and lanes at 30 miles per hour. A sticky wall 15 feet tall moved buildings with its power. People screamed and fought to flee Away from the disaster They ran with the molasses Was moving even faster They thrashed and struggled in the goo Trying to get unstuck But twenty-one when all was done had perished in the muck. Uncounted livery horses, carts demolished too. It took out six warehouses and a mail truck passing through. It soaked the ground for blocks around and residents will tell that on a sultry summer's night there's still a lingering smell the bat was never solid and the treacle trickled down to cover up the many leaks they had it painted brown Children caught the drippings and brought them home to eat Molasses ran into their pans Gooey, dark and I understand that that was the first song, Molasses Disaster, first song you ever right. wrote? Yes. Um, I was sitting around with a bunch of songwriters and we were singing disaster songs. Mm -hmm. And it just sort of came on me in a flash and I asked, has anyone written a song about the molasses disaster? <laughs> and they said, no, they didn't think so. So I said, dibs. Um, it uh -huh. turned out there were three other songs about the molasses disaster, but uh -huh. I didn't know that. So. Uh huh. Great. So uh, now I met you at a songwriting workshop that was in Connecticut. Right. That the Connecticut Songwriters Association put on, and uh, um, so I know that you do like to to get together with other songwriters. Right. right. And uh, that's cool. So that was sort of like a. Uh, like a jamming kind of thing, or the, the, songwriter oh, the, circle, the way you wrote this um, a workshop. Or, no, no, you know? it was it was just a bunch of people getting, getting together, together, and yeah. we just happened to get into disaster Informally. songs that evening. Uh huh. Cool. So. All right. Now, um, you have a CD called yes. "Fitting In," and uh, and 
it has the molasses disaster on it. Does yep. it have the first song you did yes, too? Yes, it does. Okay, and, uh, and you're going to be doing some other songs today. Are they all on here? No. No, okay, some of them are not, okay. Um, and I, understand, I really like your website. I want to make sure people know about your website too. It's, it's www.oat. OAT.com. Yep. And what you were telling me what OAT stands for? Omnivore Arts and Technology. Okay. Uh, back when my roommate and I were, were co using the site, he was, uh -huh. he was an engineer. And Great. And on that site, it's a really nice site. You, you don't just have, like, you have lyrics to your songs yep. and stuff yep. and information about your gigs, but you also have information about um, your artwork as well. Right. Or in information about there, there's some of it yes, there. Yeah. Okay. And uh, so that you had do watercolors. Right. And, and you also do do you said digital art. Do digital you, art, which usually or lately has been involved t taking a photograph that you know one of my mm -hmm. photographs and then manipulating it digitally. Mm -hmm. And lately, I've been aiming to get things that look like watercolors that started as photographs. But oh. That's interesting. I'm not even sure any of those are up there at the moment. I'll have uh -huh. to put some. Yeah, great. Now, do you feel like your the visual arts that you do, does that ever influence any of your songs at all, or vice um, versa, that your songs might inspire not, not artwork? Not that I'm aware of. I mean, okay. the, the, the visual art started much earlier. Mm -hmm. I mean, okay. I've been doing that always. Oh, okay. You've been doing that always. And then, and when did you start writing songs? About six, seven years ago. Oh, okay. So that was. Uh huh. It was a new thing, but I got. A, I got enough positive reinforcement for mm -hmm. the first one that I tried some more. Okay, oh, yeah. great. Well, why don't you do another one, and then we can okay. talk a little bit more. A couple of my. Biological songs. When scientists first studied angler fish, they collected their samples all round. But some strangely it happened again and again. Females were all that they found. Oh, females were all that they found. Then one day somebody looked closer at the lumps that a female displayed, discovering the fate that the male fish had met and the terrible price that they paid. Oh, terrible price that they paid. For male fish are born with vestigial guts, but they have a most keen sense of smell. They use this to locate an anglerfish gal in the dark murky depths where they dwell. Oh, dark murky depths where they dwell. Once a male finds a girl, he bites into her side, dissolving her skin and his lips. They fuse into one, and that's how he gets fed. But now he's attached to her hips. Oh, now he's attached to her hips. Time passes, and he keeps dissolving, till only his gonads remain. Hanging outside of her body where she wears her conquest like a chain. Oh, wears her conquest like a chain. So scientists studying angular fish taught males till they thought they'd go blind. But the guys have no guts, so only their nuts were all the researchers could find. Oh, all the researchers could find. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about how um, how you write songs ordinarily? Um, sure. Um, first of all, I, if something I come across something that's interesting, like that bit about the anglerfish, mm -hmm. I just I just sort of looked at it and said, "Well, that's interesting. That's weird. Mm -hmm. I'm going to write a song about that." Uh huh. Um, Does it take you a while to get around to writing it, or you right away you it, write? It depends. Depends. Yeah. I have a have a notebook of, of ideas, potential ideas that may never be gotten to. Uh huh. 
That's a good idea, though. Sometimes people think of things in the middle of the night, and they'll have a notebook beside their, their bed, Maybe and they write it down. Maybe because you don't remember in the morning. Yeah. Um, and then I at least usually write the lyrics first, mm -hmm. and then come up with a tune that fits the cadence. Um, mm -hmm. I know other people do it by starting with a tune and put lyrics to that. So. Mm -hmm. I keep thinking I should try that sometime, but I haven't haven't done it yet. Uh huh. Now, have you ever co-written? <laughs> I tried once at music camp, mm -hmm. and the guy who was assigned to be my partner went home early, mm -hmm. so <laughs> I never got to. We we, we never got uh -huh. a product. Okay. Now, you want to tell people about music camp and what? Oh, okay. Where is um, where does that happen? Uh, it happens up in New Hampshire, Sam uh -huh. W. It's um, put on by WUMB, mm -hmm. and it's for adults of all levels of um, experience mm -hmm. and and people just. It, it's a cult. Uh huh. <laughs> and it takes place every year. Yep, t twice a summer. For, twice a for summer, a week, huh? right? Cool. And is it any particular genre or anything, or is it, it just tends for songwriters toward acoustic, in general? No, 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 not even more? songwriters. It oh, tends to be okay. acoustic type, folky type oh, okay. stuff, and a lot of people become songwriters because they go there. Mm-hmm. Cool. Sounds good. A lot of people go to it, or I think you know, uh, there's room for about eighty. Oh wow. Per session. Great. So. So people must come from all over for that. Yeah, yeah. yeah we get them wow. from Canada, California. Wow. Weird places like New York. And that's in New Hampshire. Yeah. Oh, wow. Sounds cool. Yeah. Now, um, I want to make sure that people, again, know what your website is. It's oat.com, right? Right. Okay. And they can find your song lyrics there? They can find the lyrics there. And where can they actually buy your music? You can get it from CD Baby. Mm-hmm. Or if you contact me on the website, I'll get okay. back to you and All right. arrange something to send it. Great. Well, why don't you do a couple more songs okay. for us? Um, blah, blah, blah. This is a song about toxoplasmosis, a plague which induces small rodent psychosis. It makes my so bold that they'll enter the fold of a cat who has got halitosis. It's a wild protozoa whose sexual phase occurs in the bowels of a cat. Oh, cysts that are shed to new critters will spread if they should contact the cat's cat. Consumed oocysts become tachyzoites, which are motile and lodge in your brain. They replicate there and then please be aware they may cause your behavior to change. And this is a song about toxoplasmosis, a plague which induces small rodent psychosis. It makes my so bold that they'll enter the fold of a cat who has got halitosis. They produce dehydroxylase enzymes which lead to a brain with increased dopamine. Research has neglected just how we're affected, though mice become feisty and keen. Ten to twenty percent of us humans are blessed and carry this pathogen too. The question's not trivial, do we get convivial, quarrelsome, reckless, or blue? This is a song about toxoplasmosis, a plague which induces small rodent psychosis. Makes my so bold that they'll enter the fold of a cat who has got halitosis. Um. They flow into my window Moonbeams They seep into my heart Moonbeams Make me mellow When I'm near you 
make me kind of crazy whenever we're apart. Moonbeams, I see you dancing in the moonlight. Moonbeams, I see you hold your partner tight. Moonbeams, that should be part of your deception. When I see you kiss her, I know that isn't right. Moonbeams, we agreed that you'd seduce her. Moonbeams, we agreed that you'd act free. Moonbeams, we agreed you'd take her money. But when the game was finished, you'd be coming back to me. Moonbeams, so I take out my revolver. Moonbeams, and I fade into the night. Moonbeams, I don't think you'll see me coming. If you do, you'll know that it will be your final sight. They flow into my window Moonbeams, they seep into my heart Moonbeams make me mellow when I'm near you Make me kind of crazy whenever we're apart One more? Okay. This is a uh, about writing a generic folk song circa 1964. I'm gonna write myself, gonna write myself a little folk song. How everything was better way back when. I'll put in something vague about gypsies And then I'm gonna whine about men Lord, then I'm gonna whine about men For one verse I'll go on about injustice I'll write about the wars for three or ten I'll write about the trials that we're all going through And then I'm gonna whine about men Lord, then I'm gonna whine about men I'm going to steal the tune from Jerry Wasserman Cause doing that's traditional too I'm going to steal the tune from Jerry Wasserman And I will not give him credit when I'm through No, I will not give him credit when I'm through I'll write about our corrupt politicians and how we all are sheep within their pen. I'll write about the oceans and our skies so blue. And then I'm gonna whine about men, Lord. Then I'm gonna whine about men. <laughs>